In this project, we're gonna make a simple Bitcoin tracker using an ESP32 and an OLED. This will connect to the CoinGecko API and fetch um, updates every five minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. Obviously, you're gonna need an ESP32. This is a dev module. There's lots of different options you can go with. So long as you follow the correct pinout, you should be just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one and then this OLED. First thing we're going to do is connect the OLED to the ESP32 and we'll print hello world, make sure we're connected. Really, there's only four wires you're going to need. You're going to need to connect the VCC to 3.3 volts, the ground to ground, the SCL to SCL, and the SDA to SDA. Just make sure, again, you are following your pinout if you have a different ESP32 and then you should be fine as far as that goes. So up at that top, we're going to start by including some libraries. We will start with the wire.h library. This library is built into the Arduino library and it allows communications over the I squared C. So think of it like a communication channel between the ESP32 and the OLED. Without it, the ESP32 won't be able to display anything. Next, we'll include two more libraries. This is the Adafruit GFX and the Adafruit SSD1306. This first library provides a set of graphics functions to draw shapes and text and images and so forth. And this one is more specifically designed for an OLED. If you have different screens, you may have to swap these out, but this is, this is what we're gonna be using in this project. Okay, next, let's go ahead and define a few values here. We have the screen width of 128 by the height of 64. There are a lot of OLEDs that are also 32. You may need to change that if that's what you're interested in. OLED reset, we're actually not going to be using this. Um, so put it as a negative one. And then this is pretty common as a, a screen address for these OLEDs. It may be different depending on what you need, but go ahead and try this. This is pretty default for most of these. And then here, this is like a controller line. We're gonna pa pass in these values and then we'll initialize it here inside of the setup. Let's add our serial dot begin at 115200. And then we will wire dot begin. Great, so next let's go ahead and initialize the display here. So. Initialize the display. So think of this as turning on the OLED and letting the ESP32 know if it's ready to display. So now that we have that, we can create a simple hello world. I got some text here to explain it. So we're gonna start by clearing the display. We'll set the size. Again, you can change the size of this. We are going to set the text as white. You can actually inverse this. So everything is white except for the text. Um, then where the cursor position is, we're gonna say hello world, and we're gonna show it. So I think that's good for right now. We won't use our loop yet. Um, we don't need that. Go, let's go ahead and upload this and try this. So make sure you have your device selected there, and let's hit upload. One thing I will mention is a lot of these cables that plug into these ESP32s um, are power cables and not data cables. So if you have issues where it doesn't notice your device, maybe try a different cable because that can occasionally cause, cause some issues. Cool, so we are connected. It says, hello world. We probably should have made that smaller and maybe not had it offset so much, but it's working. That's all we're trying to do in this, this part of the video. I think we are ready to go ahead and start building out the API functionality to connect to coin Gecko, let's do that now. Back here in the code, we're gonna add three new libraries. We have the Wi-Fi, the HTTP client, and Arduino JSON. First, this Wi-Fi one will allow us to connect to the internet. This HTTP client is used to make HTTP requests over servers like APIs. This Arduino JSON will allow us to manipulate the JSON that comes back, which will be much easier than parsing it without it. It'll be pretty complex. So these are all the libraries we will need for right now. Let's get our Wi-Fi set up in here. So we have our SSID, my case, Bitcoin, and my password. So again, this is your Wi-Fi password. Will be Crypto Life. Okay. 
Let's get our URL set up to connect to CoinGecko. So here we have it. If I actually click on this and bring this screen over, you'll see the current price of Bitcoin right now. So what we're going to be doing is we'll be fetching this and we'll be pulling this value specifically. Now you can go in there and change the different whatever currency or coin if you want, but this is what we'll do in, in this project. Next, let's create a update interval. So we update every five minutes. Here, we wanna keep track of the last time it was updated. That way we can fetch the latest data. So in our setup, let's go ahead and delete this for right now. We will add some data here when we're connecting to Wi-Fi. But when we do connect to Wi-Fi, we will do Wi-Fi.begin. We're gonna pass in our SSID and our password. And we can actually set the display color before that. So let's go ahead and put this in here. And then underneath that, we're going to tell the display. We'll say, hey, go ahead and display. We're gonna set the text size as one. This will tell it where to set the cursor. So this will be in like the top left area. And we're gonna say, hey, this is connecting and we're gonna go ahead and display it. So, so let's say we don't ever get connected. We're gonna add this here. So we're gonna say, hey, while we're not connected, let's go ahead and just delay. So it's just gonna say connecting, connecting, connecting. But once it is connected, we'll, we'll move on. All right, this is looking good so far. Now in our loop, in here, we want to create a function that fetches and updates. So we'll create a function called fetch display price and let's go ahead and build that now. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this and we can quickly talk about it. So at the very top, we're just making sure we are connected. And if we are connected, then we're gonna initialize an HTTP client object that is going to send a request, a get request to the API and make sure that we can actually fetch something there. But then I'm gonna take that response and we're gonna store it here. And then this line's basically saying, if there's any response, so if anything came back and it's greater than zero, let's continue and extract this payload. Then this payload is extracted and parsed using the JSON li library that we imported earlier. And then we're actually going to be looking for the bitcoin.usd. So if you remember on that URL, we have Bitcoin USD. This is the value we're going to be fetching here. And then we're going to update our last update here. So that way we can keep track of every five minutes re-updating. Then we'll display the price. We'll build a function for this right here by passing in that uh, Bitcoin price data that we just got back. If there are any errors, we're going to display those errors, which we will create a display error function as well. And then that's the end of this fetch and display price. So let's first buy, let's first start with the display price function. Okay. So here's the display price passing in the price from this uh, fetch and display price. So we'll pass that into here. We'll clear the display at first. We're gonna set a header. So this will be at the top left. We want to have it display the Bitcoin to USD. This is just hard code printed. And again, if you were to change this to, let's say you wanted to fetch Ethereum, you would wanna make sure that you're calling Ethereum and then whatever currency you want that to be reflected in. Um, so this is in the top left. And then right here in the middle of the screen, we wanna make it a little bit bigger and we will display the price, the current price right here, and we're displaying it. Great, so that's real, it's pretty simple actually, um, but that's the display price. Let's get the display error function. This one's also pretty similar. We're just going to pass in the error, and if there is an error, we're gonna display that on the screen as well. This is looking pretty good. We're actually almost done here. Let's go back to our loop now and let's just make sure we have the functionality to update because as of right now we will only fetch the initial update and we won't get updates every five minutes okay so i just moved this fetch and display price inside of this if statement so this part of the code keeps track of the time and decides when to fetch the latest bitcoin price and right here, this mills function is like a stopwatch and it counts how many milliseconds has passed since the ESP32 started. 
and then it's going to check if enough time like five minutes from up here has passed since the last update if it has passed and this if statement becomes true then we're going to go ahead and refetch the uh the the data and update that and then down here we just have a small delay so we're not just running this insane amount and potentially just overclocking our esp32 so this is looking pretty good i'm going to go ahead and flash this and we'll see if we get any errors great so we have connecting and there's the latest bitcoin price perfect we are connected and i can remove that now we have a, a working working project in the repo below there's another file that you can run to show the Bitcoin logo and have it loading and it looks just a little bit cleaner. I don't want to go over all the details of that, but I'll have that in here as well. So if you want to copy that or go ahead and read um, the changes there, go ahead and do that. But it does the same thing, still fetches from the same place, but and that's it. That's the simple Bitcoin uh, crypto tracker project you can build. I'm a huge fan of crypto and I think this was a fun project to make. We'll see you next time.